Today we are pushing our van to its absolute limits as we attempt to drive over 3,000 kilometers into the Arctic Circle and onto the most northern point of Europe. Something has literally just blown. What the hell, man? Hi, we're Helen and Tristan, and last year we embarked on full-time van life. Over the past 18 months, we have travelled Europe in our self-built camper van, exploring over 15 different countries. And we're now on our biggest challenge to date, spending the past few weeks venturing through Germany before we enter Scandinavia in our mission to get to the Nordcap. We don't know too much about Scandinavia, but one thing we do know is that it's bloody expensive. So yesterday we stocked up on as much food as possible, basically filling our van with tinned foods and jars. We have filled up with fuel, we filled up with LPG, and we are now ready to hit the road and drive to Copenhagen. The reason we have so much driving to do is because we've chosen to drive through Denmark into Sweden rather than getting the ferry. The main reason we chose to do this is because we do think it's going to be slightly more affordable even with the fuel. I'm not sure exactly how much it's going to cost but we are going to keep track of all of the costs through this whole journey up to Norway and around Norway. This morning we're going to drive an hour north to Copenhagen where we're going to cross the iconic tunnel bridge into Sweden. We did do a little bit of research on this particular bridge and we do know that it looks like it's going to be more expensive than the one yesterday. This is going to be one expensive trip and as you know Helen doesn't like to spend money so she might be swimming. Keep watching to find out how much it is. The second bridge was definitely a lot more expensive than we thought it was going to be. So the first bridge cost £47, the second bridge cost around £113 and we used around half a tank of fuel so that cost around £60. So in total just over £220. I know the ferry was around a similar price, maybe at certain times you could get it cheaper but it was looking around £200 and takes around eight to nine hours. Obviously those prices are based on us being in our camper van which is pretty big so if you're going in a car or a smaller camper van the prices do vary for the bridges. We are about 600 kilometres in but we've still got another 2,000 kilometres to go until we reach the Nordcap which we hope to try and get to in the next six days. So there is a lot of driving to do. Let's hope Stan makes it. All right then, we have just arrived at our park for night spot, which is actually placed next to this nature reserve with quite a few other campers here but it seems super quiet and it's in the countryside of Sweden and it's exactly what we imagined driving through the last parts of Sweden off the highway has just been so picturesque with the red buildings standing out from the yellow wheat fields and it's been so beautiful we're definitely feeling like Stan the van is going slower than we had imagined because we were watching the clock earlier and it just didn't move. The sun's setting now and we are starving so we're going to get an early night and hopefully get on the road early in the morning. From Sweden we had a really peaceful night's sleep here at this nature reserve today we're gonna head around just over 400 kilometers which should hopefully take around five hours of driving starting route to 
next to Virgin 233. Proceed to the route, then turn left. With our sights set on making up good time, we hit the pedal to the metal and cruise through the dense and secluded forests of Sweden. So we're almost at our... We're almost at our park for night spot after about five hours of driving. Before we head to our park for night spot, We've got to fill up with water because we have not showered for a few days. So we use Park for Night as always to find this great spot where we can fill up with water, empty our toilet, and do our grey water. I think we've underestimated the driving that's involved with this trip as you can see on a map we haven't actually got very far at all so yeah um as you saw we did stock up with non-perishables when we we're in germany because we knew that sweden norway and finland were going to be like super expensive but we still need to get some fresh stuff of course so we did pop by a little on our way here and it wasn't actually too bad we managed to get all of this for only 10 pounds. We're gonna cook some dinner and call it a night because we are still working whilst we're on the road and we have so much to do. So we'll see you tomorrow. Looks like it's gonna be a bit of a warm one today because it's already 20 degrees, but we did sleep really well last night at this free park for night spot. And we're ready and recharged to drive north towards the high coast of Sweden. <laughs> just having a look now we think it's a pipe Tristan is trying to find the tool found it no I can't find the tools so you've seen the tool but you can't remember where the tool was yes. if you've been following our adventures for a while now you'd have seen that no journey of ours goes to plan but it goes without saying that this time it really was not good we were stuck in the middle of nowhere and we quickly realised we didn't have the tools needed to fix this particular problem. Real worry began to creep in and the thought of abandoning our home to walk to the nearest town for help slowly dawned on us. But just when it seemed like all hope was lost, we were yet again saved by some strangers. They say it's the people that you meet that make travelling experiences unforgettable. Well, in our case, it's the people that we meet that make it possible. A big thank you to Jill and Felix for stopping by, lending me a tool, and getting us back on the road again. All right then, we've just got to our first point for the day, much later than we had originally planned because we had a little incident with our turbo pipe, but it's all resolved now, and hopefully Stan the van's gonna be okay from now on. Anyway, we just drove up a really long sketchy track to get to this point, which is a, basically a viewpoint over the UNESCO World Heritage Site. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce it, so we'll just put the link down here somewhere. <laughs> From what we've seen so far, it's just so beautiful. We can see for miles and we can see right out over the water inlets and the landscape's definitely starting to change yeah and also it is starting to change temperature wise as well literally are up here we're planning on heading down to one of these islands behind us and hopefully staying down there for the night and having some dinner by the water it is getting cold and the rain is coming for sure and we've still yet to find our park for night spot so god only knows where we're going to end up I've said it many times, I know 
I would change my ways and know for sure When all the crows decide to leave They settle down beneath my feet So far, our park ups in Sweden have been pretty hit and miss. None of them have been that beautiful or tranquil. They've either been just car parks or super busy spots by nature reserves. However, last night we took a bit of a risk by driving down some dirt tracks and we found probably the most beautiful park up we've had this year. It is gorgeous. We're sat here right on the edge of this fjord that leads its way into the village of Edsata and we're just surrounded by forests and the iconic Scandinavian red cabins. And as we're driving further north we can definitely start to see the difference in terms of how light it stays in the evening. We arrived here about half nine last night and it was still literally felt like daytime. It's crazy. Yeah I'm really excited about getting even further north into the Arctic Circle and hopefully still seeing the midnight sun. And we've really enjoyed just uh, taking a moment because we've driven over 1500 kilometers and we had a well-deserved lie-in this morning because the driving is definitely taking its toll on us. And in fact, we were closer, whilst we were still in Sweden, we were closer to home in the UK than we were to the Nord Cap which we found quite depressing at one point. And that 1500 kilometer mark officially is our halfway point to our mission to Norway. So yeah, today we have had a lie-in, we've chilled out a little bit, and we're just gonna do about two to three hours of driving further north, and actually hopefully try some traditional Swedish food and dishes along the way. So we haven't driven far at all to be honest uh, we had to get some fuel another 75 pounds and we also stopped off at a famous farm shop which could be one of the cutest farm shops we've ever visited i think they like to pronounce it hoogie in sweden but it's actually a danish phrase and um we got a traditional swedish cinnamon roll which was mm, good. You can only afford one about 50p per bite your bite, yeah. To burn off the cinnamon roll, we thought it'd be a good idea to pull over and have a little walk around the Skullskogen National Park. Sun's coming out and the weather's cleared up, which is great. So peaceful here. The moss like growing over all of these rocks. It's like a green carpet. I am whispering because there's quite a few other people walking around, but it's silent, it's tranquil, and it's so beautiful. There's these wooden boardwalks that are kind of like inlaid, and the snake will snake their way through these trees, and because it's rained, they're like dark black, and it looks looks so epic. What a way to walk off those cinnamon buns. Just like that, we're back at the van, ready to get on the road again. There is a sign that says no drones. I was gonna pop it up as always, but uh, you know, we respect the rules. So time to get something even more special than the cinnamon roll for dinner. Dinner, we've ordered a traditional Swedish hot dog basically, a Tunz Rolls Roll. What is it? It's like a traditional Swedish flatbread with mash and a hot dog, which sounds weird, I know, but we wanted to try it and it's massive. It was only 75 as well, Swedish kind of. <laughs> had to come back in the van because it's so cold out here and uh, 
That Chun Chunabrog. What was it even called? Chunabrog. It was so good. I bought another one. Cheers. It's definitely a shame that we have to drive so quickly through Sweden and we are trying to slow down a bit to see and experience things as we go through Sweden but we 100% already are dying to come back here. That damn Schengen. Schengen sucks. Yeah. Two more days of driving through Sweden and then we're gonna enter our 39th country of Finland baby. Let's go. So yeah, it's quite a small waterfall, only nine meters high, but it's so powerful. The water is just like funneling in and it's probably the most powerful water we've ever seen in such a condensed area. It's creating so much force, but also quite mesmerizing at the same time. Yeah, I wouldn't want to canoe down it, that's for sure. And there's lots of nice little viewpoints and picnic benches all the way on each side. And plenty of fishing points. Do you that what? Salmon. Salmon. You can really see behind us there are loads of fishermen around. It's a really popular spot but would highly recommend stopping here if you are going to do a similar route to us up to the Nord Cap. Yeah, we've still got another 700 kilometres to go. But first we've got a couple of exciting spots to stop off at in Finland. So as we are leaving Sweden, we did just want to quickly say that we have absolutely loved our time here and we are already desperate to come back. From what we saw, it's so beautiful and has so much to offer and for van life, it's great as well. There's literally service points all the way along the main kind of motorway that runs up the coast of Sweden loads of great free park ups some have just been more like literally car parks because we've not ventured too far off the main road but they've been free we haven't paid for any parking so far which is obviously great for saving money the food hasn't been that expensive like we predominantly are still using food that we brought in germany when we stocked up beforehand but when we have gone to supermarkets and picked up the occasional thing, it's been kind of like England prices, maybe a fraction more, but not expensive like what we thought it would be. Maybe Norway's gonna be more, but hopefully we're prepped for that. Here's the border. There we go, we're in Finland. Whee, number <laughs> Number 39. As we made our way through the remote forests of Finland, we got a very real sense of isolation. With just the open road ahead, we made great progress, up until we came across a little bit of traffic. What the hell, man? They don't really care, do they? I can't believe that. I've never seen reindeer in my life. I've got such a smile on my face right now. <laughs> my actual jaws hurt. <laughs> we haven't seen a moose, but we've seen wild reindeer. Do you think Santa's missing them? Yeah. <laughs> They're on the loose. That's funny. Cheers. So we got to Finland last night. However, we did not sleep well at all because it didn't get dark at all. The sun set but our window blinds aren't that great so it just let so much light leak through the windows so much last night that we just couldn't sleep so it's late it's about midday already yeah 
but otherwise this was a fine park for night spot for the night it was free it's just like a car park at the bottom of a ski resort so we didn't really see many camper vans or even cars but that might be because we are like slightly away from the main road that goes north to the nord caps however we did get woken up with reindeer with reindeer clipping cloppling around outside the van and what a majestic sight they were to see not the brightest of animals because they did stand in the way as yeah. we were driving on the highway so right in the road but right in the road definitely like a bucket list thing yeah. to see i think we'll see a lot and they're probably quite common to see but when you've never seen like a wild reindeer it's really fun and exciting yeah. we haven't got long in finland only 48 hours we spent most of that in bed this morning so we've really got to get on the road because we are treating ourselves to an arctic experience definitely a treat a one-off kind of thing i'd say it's still budget friendly to be honest yeah but before our arctic experience we've just stopped off for lunch in a cute little cafe in a local town for some traditional salmon soup salmon. which smells delicious actually Oh, this is perfect because the weather's turned outside. <laughs> you won't like this. This is all mine. You won't like it. Mm. Let's try it then. That homemade vegetable soup. Mm. It's really good. So when we said it was a small town, that was no exaggeration. We've literally just walked some of it and we're back on the road again, heading to our final spot for this video. And I'm so excited but I'm also quite hot in this coat. It's warmed up now. Right then guys, we've just checked in to the Hotel Jerris Lakeside Spa Resort. And it's not something that we usually do, but we're here celebrating not only my birthday, but it's also our 10 year anniversary. And because we're only here for a short time in Finland, we're gonna try and check off as many things as we can. So we're gonna enjoy it and try some traditional Finnish experiences. I've said it many times, I know. I would change my ways, I know for sure. When all the crows decide to meet, they settle down beneath my feet. I've got it right and I got it wrong But I learned my lesson hanging on Come sit here with me by the fire And let it go for a little while So we're feeling very relaxed after a couple of hours down in the saunas taking cold plunges in the lake and I know it's not winter and the lake definitely isn't as cold as it would be but it was still pretty chilly and after the cold plunges we enjoyed sitting in one of the many sauna places that they have here to offer and even if you don't stay in the hotel you can still visit for only like 25 euros we've just got back to the hotel room after an evening out for dinner where we did eat reindeer steak and I'm not sure how I feel about it but then again we have seen so many reindeer here and it is a Finnish delicacy so of course we had to try it and yes it was delicious so sorry santa now this is only our second night in finland and it's still weird for us getting used to the light outside because it's getting late now it's nearly 10 o'clock and it's still almost daylight outside it's crazy so luckily this like all hotels here have blackout windows and blackout blinds so no light leaks in unlike the van last night and because we only had about four hours sleep we're absolutely shattered and yeah we always say that but this time i mean it i'm absolutely knackered <laughs> um, however the mission to the nord cap continues join us next time to see if we finally make it to the most northern point of mainland europe and to see how much this road trip really cost us I'm in Sweden, baby. Riddle me, baby. Ooh. Ooh.
my jeans are too small because I've got too fat for all the hot dogs. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> but the hot dog brain started and it all went a little bit too 